Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a white, green and red or a Naya colored humans deck that's taking full advantage of some of the new additions from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan and one of the main centerpieces is Anim Pakal, Thousandth Moon, a 3 mana 1-2 legendary human saying whenever we attack with one or more non-gnome creatures we can put a plus one plus one counter on Anim and then create X 1-1 one, one gnome creature tokens that are tapped and attacking where X is the number of counters on Anim and we'll initially only get one counter, but we can already get one at the same turn we play Anim if we can immediately attack with a creature, similar to another card here in the deck, Adlin, which can make 1-1 one, one human tokens, but the upside of Anim is that it can make more than one token each turn once we start building up those plus one counters, so that can get out of hand very quickly, especially if we enhance it with other counters from another addition here, Inti, at two mana, a 2-2 two -two saying whenever we attack we may discard a card, when we do put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature, it also gains trample, and whenever we discard one or more cards, we can exile the top card of our library and play that card until our next end step. So that can be a reason not to play our land until we see what we exile first, and the ability on Inti also becomes better the longer the game goes, because then we'll have more mana to potentially play whatever we exile, instead of exiling something that we cannot cast. And then of course Inti can also add more counters to Anim, which will in turn make more gnome tokens. And then at 4 mana we've got even more synergy with Anim. We've got the partners, which can give 2 plus 1 counters to any of our creatures and give it haste until end of turn. So that can also amplify Anim's power. And then a roaming throne, a nice 4-4 with ward 2, naming human when it enters. And then and now we get to trigger our abilities of humans we control an additional time, including Anim, which will not only get an extra counter, but also an extra set of gnome tokens. So we all most get to double them so that can get out of hand very quickly and then partners also get to double their ability with roaming throne so if we get both of these in play alongside Anim we can quickly take over and take out the opponent and then taking a look at the early part of our curve, we've got more humans that synergize with the Roaming Throne. Lunark Veteran gaining life whenever a creature enters, so that can keep us alive against some of the aggressive burn decks in the format. And then Hopeful Initiate with Training can also benefit from Roaming Throne, as we now get two plus one counters if the Initiate attacks and trains. And then we can also exchange plus one counters to destroy artifacts or enchantments, so it can also overlap with Anim and partners that provide more counters, since we can also remove those from other creatures. And then at 2 mana we've got both Melira and the Loyal Bodyguard to help protect some of our key threats such as Anim and our 4 drops from opposing removal. Melira can exile herself to bring back a creature from the graveyard, whereas the Loyal Bodyguard we sacrifice to give our legends plus one plus two and indestructible until end of turn. Now of course exile effects can still get around the Bodyguard and Melira's ability, and that's where Thalia can also slow the opponent down if they have to cast a 6 mana Sunfall as opposed to a 5 mana one that might give us enough time to close out the game in the meantime. And then at 3 mana we also have two copies of Samut, which may not seem the most synergistic in this deck at first glance, but it's actually quite nice alongside Anim, Adlin, and then of course the partners giving some of our creatures haste, as we'll be able to now draw a card when our creature deals damage to the opponent if it just entered the battlefield. And then Adlin of course complementing Anim as another powerful 3-drop that can quickly snowball if we can protect it. And then to make sure we had a little bit of removal, I'm playing four copies of Animus Might, which we can often cast for just a single green mana if we use a legendary creature, and then we can take out an opposing creature or planeswalker if our creature is large enough. And then the mana base has a few goodies, of course Cavern of Souls naming human to make our threats uncounterable, sometimes we might want to name Golem to make Roaming Throne uncounterable, and then a courtyard, another way to fix our mana in this deck. And then Plaza of Heroes doesn't help us cast a turn one a Lunark Veteran or Hopeful Initiate, but can also be activated to make our creatures indestructible and gain hexproof until end of turn, so that can be another way of protecting some of our key creatures. And then we've got a few fast lands here with a Razor Verge Thicket and Copper Line Gorge. We do need a lot of green lands to make sure we can cast our Animus Smite, since a card like Courtyard and Cavern of Souls doesn't help. So we've got a lot of green lands outside of these multicolor ones. And then a few brush lands, a forest in case we need to search up a basic, and then a Boseju, and two copies of Iganjo, despite being legendary, we can often channel it for one or two mana in this deck, so it's a pretty effective removal spell as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a very promising hand. Thalia into Anim Pakal, into Partners. Facing another white deck. Ooh, nice, and a roaming throne too. 
For now, Thalia has a good attack, so can trigger Anim. Now I guess it would be a trade. Still seems okay. Just to get that counter going. Opponent does take the trade. Alright, so if they've got a Brutal Cathar, they get to reset the board. If not, Roaming Throne or Partners would be awesome. And there it is. Okay, so next up, probably go for Roaming Throne. Could also add Lin and then play Animus Might for one. Probably prefer getting the Throne going. And then next turn we'll have a much more impactful turn if Throne can attack and trigger either Anim or Adlin, or maybe both. Don't have to worry about another Cathar for a turn. And it's going to be Adversary pumping the team. Okay, so what's the play here? Could go for another Roaming Throne. Could also play a Partners first to grow Roaming Throne a bit more. And then next turn, maybe remove something, which I don't hate. If I go Adlin plus Might, we can take out a Brutal Cathar. And then if Throne attacks, we trigger Anim and Adlin twice each. But they could trade Adversary for Throne, although we would be pretty far ahead. Yeah, that's probably good enough. Just want to see all these triggers. We went from one creature in play to a whole board. And our opponent's going to keep their adversary alive. We'll see how that works out. Veteran in two. Another Cathar, perhaps. Thalia, that one doesn't bother me. I think it's time for another throne here. As much as I want to play partners as well. It's actually a close call. Because partners growing on Nemus is pretty awesome. Turn a team sideways. Alright. So as the dust settles, our opponent is very dead. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand, sadly, I don't think is keepable. No early creature to enable Anim, only two lands. And then we're still pretty far from casting Animus Might, since we need to get a green creature in play first. This is a bit better. Just gonna hope to curve out Inti, Anim, and Roaming Throne. That is a powerful curve. But uh, against the turn one lore keeper, we could still be behind. We're not gonna deal with the Hammer Skull very well. It's gonna be the Firstborn instead. So we'll try Inti. And then next turn. Either Animus might something or play Anim. Alright, Chomp deals with Inti. Hopefully that means they don't have removal left for Anim. I guess now with a backup we wouldn't mind too much. And really hoping for a fourth land for either Throne or Partners. It's gonna be a fight rigging, so they're definitely counting on Hammer Skull. Opponent's attacking, which is pretty aggressive. And found a veteran. So... I'm not sure if I should hang on to Animus Smite to maybe take out something bigger, like a, a Dracosaur, for instance. Although it's still going to be kind of challenging to get this up to 3 power, and then Animus Smite. 
since we would have to attack into a 5-5 five -five first strike. So I think it's reasonable to take out the Lore Keeper, maybe prevent him from casting said uh, Drancosaur in the first place. Gain some life back. And then still hoping for an untapped land here. Paleontologist is fine. And our opponent's going to hang back now. Alright, so Anim doesn't have the best attack. 3-4. They can double block. We trade for Paleontologist. I guess we can just play another Anim afterwards. And our opponent's struggling with their mana, so they may not want to trade after all. And then I'll send in the Gnome as well. Our opponent does double block. They might be afraid of another Iganjo, so they reconsider. Okay, that's a win. Just need that fourth line now. Opponent is thinking the same. Watley, okay, that can find their land. But uh, not a huge problem at the moment. And our land enters tapped. Yep. So we can still use the initiates by removing counters from Anim. Just so we can destroy fight rigging, which may be worth it. So how does that look like? Attack with initiate and Anim. We'll get four tokens. So we can send the current one. Initiate trains up to a 2-3. And then I'll have to wait and see how the blocks line up. The initiate could also be used to destroy the Saga from Hotly. But this fight rigging is also making me nervous if her opponent can just play a big dinosaur next turn. And if I don't attack, it feels like we're just falling a bit too far behind to activate the initiate. So I'm hoping they don't uh, block in such a way that they take out both creatures. Probably should have sent the gnome token here as well. Put on double blocks and single blocks. So, if I activate initiates, can remove one counter from Anim, one from initiate, still take out Watley. Versus just let damage happen and play another Anim, which is also reasonable since we have the follow-up throne and partners to grow it. Yeah, you know what, maybe that's still better. And then we'll still have the initiative in play to maybe blow up fight rigging later. But we do run a bit of a risk here if our opponent just plays something big. So six mana, and uh, Dracosaur means they still can't quite use fight rigging, but a six six first strike is not that easy to get past. So now what? Play roaming throne versus play partners. It's gonna hurt either way. Get to gain some life of veteran, and then I probably attack with it just to enable Anim. Initiate doesn't have a great attack. Now we're in the position where we could draw another Animist Might and actually take something out. Might have wanted to send in the Gnome Tokens as well there since we were going to lose three of them anyways. Carnosaur hits another Drancosaur, and then we haven't seen the fight rigging yet. So this is going to get ugly.
All right, a raptor could have been worse. Put on gets in. We'll take it. But we're about to have a pretty cool turn. And now we get to go veteran into partners. So partners get to trigger twice off a roaming throne, which means Anim gets to grow pretty large. And then we should be able to just attack all out here. First get seven tokens and then get eight tokens. And we're just going too wide for the opponents to survive. So yeah, luckily the missed damage from the gnome tokens earlier didn't end up mattering too much. Had a bit of damage to spare. Yeah, we seem to be pretty far behind on board, but just a synergy of Anim, a roaming throne and the partners got us across the finish line. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Hopefully we don't draw too many more lands here. But for now, initiates into either Thalia or Bodyguard, and then turn 3 Anim would be awesome. So we can attack, play Thalia, I want to say. If your opponent has removal, at least with Thalia, they won't be able to play it end of turn if it's a go for the throat. Makes their sequencing a bit more awkward. And it's going to be a Preacher instead. Alright, that does block pretty well. So do we still want to play Anim? We could also go with a land, play Bodyguard, and then channel Igancho for one mana. That's pretty efficient. Our opponent must know what this is representing. And so they're gonna take it, maybe. And then if Preacher attacks, they can uh, at least get a trigger out of it. And now we also have a Bodyguard in play to protect Anim. Okay. A Roaming Throne's also a decent play next turn, since we could double train Initiate. But uh, it's gonna be a Carnosaur taking out Bodyguard. So now I won't be able to channel Iganjo anymore for one mana. May as well sacrifice. This seems like a good window for Anim and attack. Although any of our four drops would be pretty solid as well. I think it's time for Anim. Don't need to fear any interaction. Get a good attack in. And we still have a one mana Ganjo available for Preacher. Their opponent might be a deck playing with the uh, Throne of the Grim Captain. We see a dinosaur, we see a vampire. Either way, probably okay using Iganjo here. And they've got another Preacher. Okay, so next up, a Roaming Throne versus Partners is interesting. Partners growing Anim up to 4 power, then it attacks up to 5. Making 5 tokens, can train initiates. And then I assume they trade for Anim. Take 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, gaining 1 with lifelink. It's a pretty good exchange, and then we still have partners in play for Roaming Throne next turn. Looks okay. Could also grow Thalia and just attack with our first striker, but it's not quite as exciting. And this way we also get to train. 
But yeah, opponent's gonna trade for Anim, trade for a token. Fall to five. And Appraiser's next. I had some PTSD from the Explorer combo deck and thought I was about to die. Just a Harvester, that's manageable. Play Throne on Human, get lots of triggers, and that's enough for a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand, Bodyguard into Anim, into hopefully Roaming Throne, opponent with a Freebooter. And a bat, sadly, gonna have a look here. We do have an Animus Smite, which can take out the bat at some point. So they might just take the removal spell. Alright, goes for Melira, so turn to Bodyguard it is. And then we could see removal on Bodyguard. I'll sack it, so they actually fizzle the adventure. So that wasn't too bad. And uh, Thalia could be better than Anim, because if I play Anim, I don't get to enable it right away. Feels kind of bad. Whereas Thalia can maybe set up an attack next turn. Wouldn't be able to also play Might, because we're now taxing our own removal spell. Okay, so don't need to worry about go for the throat, they could have a cut down, but uh, I think I'm willing to find out with Anim. And they could now block and make a treasure. And hopefully we get another turn with Anim in play. To go off with a roaming throne. Gigs, okay, makes sense. Good with the bats. But does not stop what we're trying to do here. And now we don't need to worry about interaction because of Thalia. Now we get to play throne in addition to an initiate. Name human. And just Anim attacking. And then initiate could double train next turn. Opponent was blue black after all. Flash Gorger, not that great here. And yeah, our opponent explodes, and Neem plus Roaming Throne is just too fast of a clock. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And we're missing a red mana. Can we still keep? Well, we have a lot of red sources we can draw. And in the meantime, Thalia can slow the opponent down. Any white source, we still play Adlin. I think it's worth it. Almost any land we draw basically is fair game. And Plaza is certainly one of them. So against an opposing Plaza, could expect them to have their own Thalia, so maybe Bodyguard lines up a bit better if we're gonna go for Anim next turn. That way we don't trade while getting the plus one counter. And yep. So I think I prefer Anim over anything else. Samut's also an option to immediately draw a card to make sure we keep hitting our land drops, which is also important. But the sooner we get Anim going, the better. So they can eat the gnome, take three. We've got Bodyguard in play to protect Anim. Although I'm not sure if her opponent's playing much removal. Maybe a Brutal Cathar can exile it still. 
Yep, that's too bad. Okay, so now I regret not going for Samut first. Can still play Samut since Adlin doesn't have the best setup here. Send both. And we could still draw land for initiates. Okay, Animus Might can uh, free Anim. And a Sigarda can pump their team now. So we've got a few creatures we need to deal with. So Might take out Brutal Cathar, get back Anim. Then we still don't have a great attack. Whereas if we take out Sigarda, we can still keep attacking, which is probably the play. And then I can play Initiates if I deal myself a bit of damage, but that's okay. I guess we don't want to show it just yet. And then we still have Adlin to maybe synergize with Samut. If the token connects, we get to draw. And our opponent is down to six in the meantime, not wanting to block. Another Sigarda. Okay, this one protects Brutal Cathar. And there's a cavern. All right, so we have options. Playing Adlin still doesn't necessarily enable the best attack. Could play Inti. Maybe discarding Thalia, and then maybe only attack with the bodyguard to offer the trade for Sigarda. If I grow Samut, we can sack bodyguard to get it up to 4 power, but it doesn't seem very good. So let's try that. And the initiates would just run into Sigarda if we attack with it too. Still an option, I could just go all out here. And then what happens? They eat Samut. Maybe Chump. Yeah, I don't hate it actually. Thalia can go, or we can just ditch another Samut. Just to add something to the board at least. Since we're pretty close to crossing the finish line. And find a land we can play. Yeah, I think this makes sense. Might have wanted to tap a little differently, leaving Brushland untapped to represent an Iganjo. But our opponent takes a trade. Yeah, our opponent also took a bit of damage of their own mana base with double pain land. And we do get to take out the Cathar here. That looks good. Our opponent's at four, and we still have an Adlin in hand. Next turn we're going to make some tokens to go wide, and Inti can uh, also grow Anim. Peacekeeper doesn't really bother us too much. Can play a five mana Adlin, and discard whatever we draw. And that should seal the deal. And yeah, her opponent explodes. We would also have a Samut in play, so if any of our tokens deal damage, we get to draw as well. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's missing some early drops, a couple too many fours. Alright, we've got Inti plus Anim. We'll give this a try. Up against the red black. I don't think I want to enable Inti just yet, since I won't be able to play whatever we exile. But next turn, I might go for it. Harvester is next. Alright, so I can play Anim. And then Inti put counter on 
I guess itself still wouldn't quite help. So we can put it on the veteran. And I'll keep a backup on him. Opponent trades for Inti. And if they answer on Neem, we can play another one. It's gonna be another Harvester. And Adlin was excellent. Go to Attackers and smash. Now Harvester can still take out any of our legends with double blood token, but the damage has been done. Hoping they take out Anim since we can back it up. And our opponent's not quite sure here, but yeah, an Anim with two counters I would say is a little bit better than Adelin here. Shield was next. And uh, can't quite take it out since we don't have green mana. But another Anim should do the trick. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Bodyguard into Anim, into partners. Up against what could be a domain deck. So the main fear here is a Sunfall exiling our board. And I don't know if we're going to be fast enough to prevent that. Bushwhack's kind of unusual, so it might be something else. Opponent did get an island, so likely still a domain deck. They have access to a 2-mana Leyline Binding, which we're probably going to get to see in action. Thalia can slow down a potential sweeper. I don't think I played now. I think we go for Adlin, although that does require playing a land other than Copper Line Gorge. So maybe it is still Anim, even though it has better synergy with the partners, just to make sure we don't have to deal with a tapped Gorge later. And then um, if they take out Anim, we're still hitting them with a Bodyguard. Could also attack first, but then if they don't have the Leyline Binding, we miss out on quite a bit of value. And it is possible for them to be holding Herd Migration, for instance. So I'll try this. Alright, opponent binds Bodyguard. Still gonna let them exile it, in case we find Boseju we can get it back. And Invasion is next, so our opponent can cast our 7-drop next turn. And uh, Thalia's not gonna prevent Sunfall from happening. So we can't really play around Sunfall, so the best I can do is probably just Partners and Smash. And then we can play Adlin plus Thalia next turn. Alright, cross our fingers. Archangel of Wrath is still potentially beatable, since it doesn't take out Anim. And if they play a 7-drop, we can maybe still find a way out. Briefcase into Leyline Binding, pretty good. Still have our partners. Never mind. Double Binding. Our opponent is down to one card in hand, but they've got a Briefcase to refuel. And then now Thalia into Adlin. It's still pretty solid. Well, at least uh, Bodyguard, Anim, and Partners can keep each other company on the opponent's side of the battlefield. They're gonna block take three. Last turn they had a tap land, so possible they have a seven drop in hand, but they just couldn't cast it. No nope, opponent goes digging with Briefcase, that's excellent news. They already cast their fair share of bindings, so they might just be dead here. I think we play a land. 
So we can still keep a plaza, play EMT, discard veteran, and then that should be enough to cross the finish line. Awesome, and we get to rank up as well. Yeah, if our opponent had Sunfall, that could have been pretty bad. But uh, yeah, turns out we could even beat triple Leyline Binding. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our Naya Humans deck in action, and it definitely impressed. The synergies between Anim, Roaming Throne, and Partners are off the charts, and can uh, potentially win games that seem unwinnable at first glance, especially the one against Dinosaurs comes to mind. So I'm uh, quite happy with how the deck turned out. Now it is certainly one of those decks that needs to snowball its board advantage, so while it can potentially catch back up, it's more of a deck that wants to get ahead and stay ahead. So if you're facing decks with a lot of removal or especially sweeper effects, it can be difficult to rebuild. So that still makes it quite vulnerable to the more controlling decks in the format. So I don't think it's going to be the best deck in standard necessarily, but once it gets going, it can certainly pull off some of the most amazing synergies. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.